Sosoy, become the motor. Hey folks and welcome to another Sosoy spike boarding demonstration and tutorial. Here you have the Kubi Cross and you have a spike boarding athlete with a skateboard spike and a skateboard optimized for spike boarding. Uh, there they are, Kubi Crossing and using a switch kick with their legs, a Nordic ski stroke up top, a little stand up spike. But this all begins to take shape and form with a scooter, folks. Absolutely. So a Kubi Cross stroke, the bottom half is a switch kick. So neurologically, the best way to begin to develop the body and adapt to spike boarding load is with a switch kick. And maybe a couple days a week doing stand-up spike and then riding a scooter. So jumping on a board and trying to switch kick and dialing in your Kubi Cross is not the hot setup. The hot setup is with a scooter and the best part is they are a blast as you can see. Now this particular scooter is an adult scooter. It's called a kick pad and it is built out of the toughest stuff you can imagine and it is the number one spike boarding scooter that we have ever used and it's got a fabulous plate brake in the back, a little friction brake. The wheels are a pretty soft durometer so that brake gets a lot of friction back there and as you can see you can comfortably descend really uh, chunky little hills nicely without any uh, regard for radical or out of control. Certainly you want to learn to get to use your brake slowly and be comfortable at speeds. So what we're going to do here is a loop, um, about a 13 minute loop uh, with a high side and a low side. Obviously we just came off the top of the high side. We are in Orange County, New York, um, right near the Hudson uh, River. And so the lower Hudson Valley is a spectacular place for all transport sports, be it um, cycling or skiing or switch kicking a board or super scootering like we're doing here um, on this fantastic adult scooter by KickPed. You can get them online, just look them up, K-I-C-K-P-E-D, and they are sold all over the place. Now, what you want to do is focus on putting all of your weight on your quadricep and visually imagine yourself on a board because if you're really leaning hard onto the bars, that's not going to help you. You want to really emphasize all the weight on your leg. And it's, it's uh, a little easier said than it is done because you'll have a predisposition to want to lean on those bars quite a bit. So you constantly have to monitor the body and uh, sort of scan yourself head to toe and say stay loose stay loose and don't put weight on the bars you just want to use the bars the same way as an old person would use a cane they just need a little bit of neurological um, assistance so that the body can know that it's got uh, a solid footing but you don't need all that much so you want to stay really really light on the bars now you also want to do is drop the shoulder as you can see the head right there is going over to the right uh, to the left of your picture and we're dropping that shoulder emphasize dropping the elbow and the shoulder of the opposing side of your body so the athlete now is kicking on the left which is your right and he's dropping the shoulder on uh, his right your left and now he just switched and now the opposite notice how the head is dropping because what you want to do folks is you want to get your nose over your knee cap and your kneecap over your toes and so skating is all about gliding whether you're skate skiing in Nordic ski whether you're ice skating speed skating inline skating on wheels or if you're on a board it's all the same glide over a center line folks if you are not gliding over a center line when you're on a board you're pushing material if it's wood more than likely you're pushing wood so you need to drop that shoulder and if that kick leg is returning very quickly to the board you know that you are not gliding 
And the essence of skating is to glide. You must be able to glide. Hockey skaters, figure skaters, speed skaters, they all momentarily glide over a center line with their nose, over their knee, which is over their toes. And so the scooter lets you begin to develop muscularly, helps you develop your muscle memory, begins to give you strength in that quadricep. Have a look at that quadricep right now. Each one of those legs needs to support the entire mechanism. So when you're on a board, it's very different than a scooter. The, actually, the machine ends at your hip when you're on a board. So the foot, the knee, uh, the entire upper leg become part of the mechanism of the board. And God help you if you haven't set that up and it's not strong enough to support you because it's not gonna work. So don't even try it. And the good thing is that very slowly, a little at a time, you can begin to develop that mechanism, which is from your toe tip to the top of your hips, which is gonna support the body. So right now you're looking at a scootering athlete and the athlete is mimicking a skateboard kick, but they're getting a tremendous amount of assistance from the scooter uh, handlebars. Without those handlebars, things become extra. It doesn't become harder, it just becomes extra. And so if someone says to you, hey, are you trilingual? Can you swim? Can you run and cycle? No, I can run and I can cycle, but I can't swim. So then it becomes incredibly challenging for you. But all you really need to do to overcome a challenge is seek out education, become a student, and then learn the movement language that you need. Learn the physical language or learn the verbal language or learn the education that you need. And here you see a little bit of technique that's mimicking a kubi cross and we're not going to do it for long because it's pretty steep here. Uh, it's a pretty steep pitch but we want pitch but we want to show you that it is possible to do. Actually it's an advanced move so don't try to hold your scooter one arm until you're super comfortable doing it with how slow can you go drills in pan flat uh, pavement away from others and away from traffic. And of course this athlete's wearing a helmet and that's all that they need uh, for themselves. If you need more uh, safety gear, by all means, get some wrist guards, get some elbow pads, get some knee pads, and for sure don't head out into open traffic um, and open roads until you feel completely comfortable being safe uh, for others around you and for yourself, of course. So as you can see, the hands here are just barely touching the bars. You want to mimic the board. Try to mimic the board. And we call it switch kicking because you're going to switch kick a scooter and you're going to switch kick a board. If you give it any other language, there's really no other way to describe how to switch kick on a scooter. And of course, it's the same physiological movement. So you can either have a low kick or you can have a high kick, depending on uh, what's comfortable for you and the terrain. But that will tend to vary. So as it starts to uh, flatten out a little bit here at the top, our kick goes up a little higher. And as you can see, the hands are just incredibly light on the bars. And we're trying not to put any pressure on them. We're trying to put all of the pressure, all of the pressure on that quadricep. So it's that support leg that's really going to need the development. The push leg needs it as well. And certainly if you've just gotten into these activities, you know, don't go flying out doing even 45 minutes of this sort of activity. If you haven't at all kicked, no matter how fit you are, your Achilles will not be uh, well adapted. So start adding 10%, uh, 5 to 10% per week as far as your time goes and acclimate slowly and your body will adapt to the load. Here we are at the top of the high side. This is just going to be a nice little uh, flat uh, ride straight back over to our descent. We'll do it one more time so you can have a peek at it uh, complete. I know we had a couple of dissolves uh, before um, hand and you didn't see the entire descent but you also get to uh, see how well that brake works. So the way that you do switch uh, on scooters is focus on your heel. So you'll notice that the heel pivots, the toes go out and then the toes come back in onto the deck plate. So watch that rear foot again, and you're gonna watch it as if there's a pin right in the heel. The heel goes out, and then the toes come in. Don't do it the other way around. It will not be as comfortable nor successful for you. So imagine there's a pin in your heel, you just shift it out, and then the toes 
come in. It's as simple as that. And of course, obviously what you want to do is keep your cadence equal. Notice that shoulder keeps dropping. So we're staying over our center line and imagining we are on a board. And of course that's going to help a tremendous amount. And contrary to popular belief, ambipedal skill set is not as challenging as people might seem. I will tell you right now that it is probably 90% less challenging than hockey skating backwards with a C cut to the left and the right, as well as figure skating, skating backwards to the left and the right. That's probably the most challenging form of human propulsion on land. Skating backwards with high efficiency for C cuts left and right. So to switch kick on a board is not that challenging. Folks, get on a scooter and begin to keep everything even and you will begin to realize that you can switch kick a board and of course once you can switch kick a board you are very close uh, to the Kubi cross stroke and of course then you will begin to benefit from the same thing that cross country World Cup skiers do and that is their upper body propulsion which adds about which contributes approximately 70%. 65-70% of all skiers' power comes from their upper body. So it's very challenging to get a high percentage of power output when you're going up hills. And of course, that's what spike boarding is all about. It's all about the uphill. So when you zip down these downhills, go ahead and practice your center line and try to find that effortless place where you don't need to put that much pressure onto the leg because you're just balancing right over the center lines, like finding the sweet spot when you move a refrigerator. So this is a, a not a super crazy steep pitch, but at the bottom, it's pretty pitched right here. And uh, you see that that break just works really, really nice. So don't monkey around with any scooters other than the kick pad. This is the one you want. We tested them all. Spike hard, spike often, spike boarding. So soy, become the motor.